Are you curious about the powerful tools hidden in Microsoft 365? Join us in this detailed tutorial from our expert trainer who walks you through each step. Let's get started. Now, track changes are useful if you want to gain feedback from other people before sending your document out. And what track changes allow you and others to do is make changes to the document itself and Word will record who has made that change. Then, as the document author or creator, you can go through and review the proposed changes and then choose which ones you want to accept or reject. So on the screen in front of me, I have, again, just a very basic document with a heading. And what I want to do here is I want to go in and make some changes to this document, but I want to track the changes that I'm making. Now it's worth noting that by default, track changes isn't turned on. So I can jump into this document, I can click anywhere and I can make changes such as inserting text as I've done there. I can also come in and delete out text and no one would be any the wiser that that text was there. However, what I want to do here is I want Word to essentially mark where I'm making changes so that other people can review those changes. So the first thing I need to do here before I start editing my document is turn track changes on. Now there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. So the first way is if we jump up to the review tab, you can see we have a group in the middle here called tracking. And one of the buttons is this split button called track changes. Now if I was to click the top half of this button and you can see the shortcut there is control shift E, it's automatically gonna turn track changes on. If I click the lower half, I have again another option to turn on my track changes or I can choose to lock tracking. Now what lock tracking means is that you can only switch off tracking changes if you have a password. Now I don't want to do that, I just want to turn my track changes on, so I'm gonna click on the option for track changes. Now again, sometimes when you're working in a document, it can be quite difficult to see if you've got track changes turned on. Really, the only indication that you have is if you jump to the review ribbon, you can see that the track changes button is kind of showing in gray. So what I like to do here, just to make it a little bit more obvious and also easier for me to toggle between turning the track changes off and on, is in the status bar, I'm gonna right click my mouse and you can see that halfway down the customized status bar menu, I have an option for track changes. So if I click it, what you'll see is that now in the status bar, I get this little piece of information that tells me my track changes are turned on. And if I want to turn them off, I can just click down here to switch them off. So I find that a much quicker way of toggling my track changes off and on. So I have them on currently, so let's start making some changes to our document. Now it's worth noting that when you are tracking changes, there are three different types of changes that you can make. You can make changes to the actual content, so that might be inserting additional words or sentences or deleting. You can make changes to the formatting, so I can make certain words bold, underlined, things like that. Or I can add in comments. Now, comments aren't technically part of track changes. They are a standalone thing, but they kind of tie into this. So we're going to look at them as well throughout this section. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to click at the end of that second paragraph, hit enter. I'm just going to add in a new line. And you can see what's happened to that new line of text. It's showing in a red font with an underline, and I also have this vertical marker in my margin. So essentially what this is telling me is that there are track changes in this area of the document. Now, maybe I also wanted to delete something from this document, so I'm gonna take this sentence just here and press the delete key. And this time I have a strike through running through it. So I can still see all of the changes that I'm making, so it hasn't deleted it out, I can still see it there, but I'm really proposing that this needs to be deleted. I'm gonna go in and add a little bit more. So let's do, this is another new line. And then maybe let's delete out this entire paragraph. What I can also do is replace words. So maybe if I take this word time, double click it, 
and replace it with hours, you can see that it puts the word time as a strike through, so a deletion essentially, and the word hours as an insertion. Now this markup will also apply if you add images or tables into your document. So again, if I make a little bit of space, I'm just gonna go up to the insert ribbon and just add in a quick table. You can see that the table cells are shaded in that light blue color. So when you insert something like a table, the markup is set to shade that table in blue. Now you can change these colors and I'm gonna show you that in a later module. So let's move down to the second page and let's insert a quick picture. So I'm gonna jump up to insert. Um, I'm gonna to go to pictures and just find a picture that I have saved off somewhere. And I'm just gonna select this one and insert it. And what you might be able to see is that not only do I have that vertical marker in the margin telling me that I've inserted a picture, I also have a red line running underneath that picture to show that that is an insertion. What was your favorite part of this tutorial? We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Visit the Simon Says It channel, explore our videos and training sessions, and decide what you wanna learn next.